Now we're going to take a look in this video on how to replace the hub oil seals. Now generally speaking it's on swing axle vehicles and uh, we're going to be doing this on a Volkswagen Beetle but it does apply to split screen vans and to early type 3s as well, all quite similar. Um, it's a relatively straightforward job, can be a bit messy and it does rely on the fact that you've already jacked up your vehicle safely and have already removed your rear hubs. If you've not done that then please check out the how-to videos, do that and then come back. But of course the next thing to do is look at the tools and the parts that we need. So most of the tools are from the basic toolkit, with the exception of one but you don't necessarily need it. So we have a hammer, mole grips and pliers because they're always useful and we're going to be needing to take the brake shoes off more than likely. So the pliers or the special tool for removing the uh, anti-rattle, the locating pins. You're going to need a 14mm socket and I would suggest a variety of extensions just to pull you away from the axle, all will become clear. And a, a screwdriver just for prying moving things around. Now if your hub oil seal has blown then the chances are that the uh, brake shoes will be contaminated. So here we've got a set of brake shoes and this is a, a brake a shoe fitting kit here. So we've got all the various springs and pins and what have you all in one place. You may also need to replace your wheel cylinder, very straightforward procedure, so there's one here. But of course the most important thing is the hub oil seal kits themselves. So you get all the relevant uh, O-rings and the actual seal itself and the gaskets and a new split pin. It's all self-contained in the one kit. A few consumables, a good supply of gloves, it could get messy this job. Uh, a little smear of grease, some brake cleaner you're going to need plenty of and I would suggest a good supply of uh, paper toweling or rags and of course some safety glasses and a breathing mask for while you're cleaning off the brake backing plates. Okay, what we're actually looking at is this plate here and the seal and the various uh, parts of the kit actually fit inside here. Now in extreme cases you might be very lucky and you can physically just remove these four 14mm headed bolts and withdraw the carrier itself in one go but it's obvious from this one and nine times out of ten on your vehicle will be the same. The whole thing is just absolutely covered in gunk. So we need to give this a good cleaning down and then remove the brake shoes. If you've never done that before check out the how-to video and return because we'll be carrying on removing the cover after the shoes have been removed. Well you can see we've removed the brake shoes now and given this a very good clean up we've got rid of all the goo that was on there and it is this plate here, the hub carrier itself, that we're going to be taking off. Now behind here is the seal that stops the gearbox oil coming out. Now the gearbox oil goes up and down the solid shaft on a swing axle and lubricates the rear wheel bearings. Now if we take it off like this at the moment the oil is going to gush out. So what we're going to do is carefully put the jack underneath, underneath down by the uh, lower shock mounting and raise it up gently but not so much that it lifts off the axle stand. We want it to be closely and carefully supported there. Okay, so we're just going to jack this up gently, take it up as far as we can before it actually lifts off of the axle stand. So just doing this nice and gently and it's not going to stop it actually coming out but it will slow it down cap so I'll put some rag down to catch the oil as it comes out. Okay, we've got our 14mm socket and ratchet then and it's set to undo and you can come in on here and do it or as I mentioned earlier on when we looked at the tools you might prefer to actually do it well away from the axle itself and do it with the extension. Now I'm going to do it up close and there's one good reason for that. I don't know why but these uh, bolts that they've always used on here are very very short and so there is a chance of them slipping off and they can quite often be tight so I like to be in close just to get the control. So they are often quite tight, it's just a case of cracking them off to start off with. Oh, we've been lucky there. And part of that luck was self-generated because we've given it a very good clean off. Often when you're doing this job and there's brake dust and everything, it'll all be clogged up round here and you can't get a clean fit between the socket and the bolt. So it's always worthwhile doing that clean up first. And once they are loosened off, just use the extension and do it all by hand. Leave the other top one in and that way you won't put the bottom bolts under pressure. And then take the top one off. You might be lucky and it might just fall out. 
If not, it's time to get your pry bar or screwdriver and just lightly wiggle it round and just hope that somebody hasn't used silicon sealer in there in the past. Okay, it's just starting to come now. And there we can see the oil starting to pour out. Unfortunately, not much we can do about it. And uh, immediately, I think I've seen the problem with this one. Sorry, it's the O-ring that wasn't put in correctly and it's just been torn in two, so it wasn't even doing the job, hence all the mess in the first place. As ever, we need to give everything a good clean up. Now you may find parts of an old paper gasket on the surface. This one looks clean, but in, in that case, just use a thin flat bladed screwdriver or maybe a Stanley blade to carefully scrape it off. And we'll get the worst of the gunk off here. And then again, after reading the safety instructions, and of course you'll be wearing a paper mask as well, some kind of respirator, a little bit of brake cleaner to get it off. The next part of the job is going to be relatively difficult and we want this without any slippage at all, so get rid of all that oil. Well, of course, before we can actually put the new gaskets on, we'll need to remove the old one. Now, quite often you'll see Mr. Non-VW Mechanic has smeared this area with lots of silicon, um, so you might want to check that out. And uh, if you look here, you can see where the old O-ring, the main one that goes around the outside, had been badly positioned and it actually had pinched up and broken in two. When we took the hub cover off, part of it fell away and I suspect that's where most of the leak had come from. Um, same story here as with the surface on the hub cover itself. It is prone to getting little bits of gasket stuck on here. And like I say, if somebody's tried to cheat and fill it with silicon in the past, you might want to take that off. And the last thing to clean out is actually the drain hole. It's the corresponding part to what we've seen on the hub carrier, which is prone to being a bit blocked up. Quick squirt to make sure nothing's going to sit underneath the gasket there. We've got one last job to do, and that is the O-ring that lives behind the spacer. Well, the spacer can quite often be quite difficult to take off. We know how much uh, foot-pounds goes into tightening up the axle. Oh yes, this one is nice and tight. So we'll get some releasing fluid on there and then maybe use a pin punch again and just give it some light tapping just to, uh, to free everything up. So just light taps, just to shake it all around a bit. Oh. Well, this is one of those things that's just not going to shift. We need something slightly bigger, so I've got myself quite a long crowbar here. Just make sure the end's nice and clean. I say crowbar. Pry bar, whatever you want to call it. And be very careful here because you don't want to go slipping off and damage the wing or anything like that. Yes, yes, that's moving. A little bit of extra leverage. And hopefully, once it's moved a little further along, we can probably use a screwdriver again, or it might even go free, because we've got lots of releasing fluid in there now. There we go. And off it comes. And you can see both the washer that you get in the kit and the O-ring in there, along with surprise supplies, a load more grot and debris in here. So we'll need to give that a good clean up and replace both those parts. So again, it's a thing of being patient and just moving it a little bit at a time until it comes off. And then it should just slide away. So we've got a lot of the rubbish out of there, but again, we'll give it a final cleanup. 